Sky Squad is Heather Gay a liar? Well, according to Mary Cosby, she is quite the liar indeed. So chime down in the chatterization and let us know whose side are you on, Mary's or Heather's? I'm interested. I also want to know whose side you're on, if it's Lisa's or Whitney's, because that was the other big blow up in this episode, okay? We're going to be talking Salt Lake City, but before we dive into that, we have a spoiler alert for the Raw Housewives of Potomac. So you've been warned, this is going to be a spoiler video. So if you don't want to be spoiled, just hit the mute button until I get to Salt Lake City, okay? With that being said, before we dive in, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell button, and also make sure you tap that like button. Smack it, flip it, rub it up and down. It helps the channel. And of course, leave your commentary down below. For those of you guys that don't know, we are going to Thailand March 1st to the 7th. If you haven't tapped into one of our trips, maybe I don't know what you're waiting on. Okay, we build bonds on these trips. It's meant to relax, relate, and reset. Okay, so if this is something that you're in need of, tap in on our Thailand trip by clicking the first link in the description down below. With that being said, let's go ahead and tap dance into what we got to talk about today. All right, so first things first, Potomac is on the menu. So thanks to our friends over at the Bravo Shade Room, we have a sneak peek of the next week's episode, which we always love to dissect, right? Um, at least I do. Now, I hope that most of you do as well. Because, you know, I'm nosy and I can't wait, okay? I like a little sneak peek. I like a little spoilerization. I do. I mean, it is what it is. Okay, like, you know, it, it just, it, it's just something that I love. And we've been doing it on the channel for so long, so we might as well continue. So the girls are heading down to the fabulous Lake. Is it Lake Norman? Is that what it's called? I can't remember. Down to the Charlotte, okay? I've been schooled on the fabulosity of this area, and I will not forget it, okay? Now. Stacy, of course, is, is heading down in her own separate car because she did not want to fly, okay? Now, that's why you see her. It says Stacy's road trip car. However, what we will also discuss is the fact that we see Mia and Karen in the car together as well. And they get on the topic of Stacy. And so, you know, they try to give her a buzz. They try to give her a ring a ling ling. And, you know, Stacy doesn't pick up. And so they assume that Stacy is just maybe done with them for the moment, right? If I was Stacy, I would be too. Like, I mean, let me enjoy my road trip in peace before I have to be on camera and and, and read a beat. Okay. So um, but while Stacy is ignoring and 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 not ready to read a beat, they the girls particularly Mia, is ready to read her. So Mia tells Karen that she's just, that Stacy, she's not feeling Stacy. She says Stacy is just not that interesting and that everybody else has said the same thing because Karen wants to know, do all the girls feel like that? And, you know, Mia is like, yeah, pretty much. And I'm like, that's very interesting to me. I don't know what they feel like Stacy gives in her in the moment, like in, in like the scenes, but it's inter it's intriguing to me that they feel that way because I think the fan reaction to Stacy has been very different. Um, in terms of me as a viewer, I agree with a lot of people that Stacy is a fresh addition to this show. I feel like Stacy, whereas maybe what's not interesting. And Mia says she's just not her type of girl. What's maybe different for Stacy with being on this show is that Stacy just comes across as very put together, like very, you know, kind of classy. And I know in my in my opinion, it just comes from being in the broadcast world, right? I, I just think that it's ingrained in her to present herself in a way that feels it, it, it's just kind of how it, it I can't really explain it when you when you're when you're grown to work in news. Right. And I, I hate to say groom because I think that's a bad term. But I think that when you are just I can only speak for myself, you kind of are there's a, there's a level of expectation, whether it is self-imposed or not, that you are to conduct yourself with a certain amount of decorum. Right. 
at least in certain settings. And I'm sure Stacy, being her first season, is also trying to find her footing in this space. So it's kind of like you got to give these people a chance to like blossom. And to be quite frank with you, I feel like Stacy has done just that. So the comments on the post are literally, <laughs> I mean, they are coming for Mia. One person says, well, Mia, not everybody can have a boyfriend and a husband. Then they say dot, dot, dot. Well, Stacy does, but I mean, it's kind of true. She kind of has a husband. And she kind of has the boyfriend. Definitely different circumstances. Okay. Certainly different circumstances. Because I don't know what we would qual qualify TJ as. But I don't have time to talk about that right now. Let us know what you think in the comment section down below. Do you agree with Mia? Or do you feel like you're feeling Stacey? I, I, like, the, I like that Stacey is, is dramatically different from what we're used to seeing on this particular show. But she seems to oddly fit to me. So I don't know. Y'all let me know down in the chatterization down below and shout out to our friends over at the Bravo Shade Room for that sneak peek -erization. All right, so let's talk about Salt Lake City, all right? Now, this episode is season five, episode six. It's called Mafia Wives and Bad Vibes. Now, the episode description reads, as such, Andy cele Angie celebrates her 25th wedding anniversary with a mafia-themed party. Whitney accuses Lisa of leaking the rumor about her jewelry company. Mary and Angie accuse Heather of being toothpaste. And Brittany is caught in a love triangle. I mean, Mary outright calls Heather a liar, as she did last week. I am actually kind of loving how Mary has her foot on Heather's neck. Um, because I do feel like Heather gets away with a lot of things. With a lot of throwing the rock and hiding her hand. And nobody really calls her out for it. So I love that Mary is the one that's doing it. That does not mean that I don't like Heather. I do like Heather. I think she is a necessary asset to this show. But I do think that two things can be true at the same time. Heather is a necessary asset for this show. But I think that she also is a, a person who stirs the pot quite a bit and then wants to back away like she's doing uh, like she's doing all of the the good work of the lord and it's like girl no you're just as messy as everybody else you're messy you're just as messy as what you are accusing everybody else particularly Bronwyn of being so um that's just my thought and you know mary calling heather out about her lies i mean i think that <laughs> it's fascinating to me because Heather did get caught up in a game of who gave you the black eye. I mean, she lied about that for a long time, allegedly, right? I mean, she was spinning different stories and spinning her wheels. And so I just kind of feel like, yeah, I mean, I think that what Mary, there was some credence to what Mary was saying. Do I understand why Heather was maybe lying about the black eye or I, let's maybe not say lying. Let's maybe say purposefully misleading. Okay. Why she was purpose, purposely misleading, okay, all of us, I'm sure she had her reasons, but it don't make any sense, and it don't change the fact that it was misleading. All right, so let's talk about the episode in general. I'm going to give it a flat out 10, to be honest with you. What I love about Salt Lake City and what I love about Love & Hip Hop, very two different, two very different shows, but what I love is that they are just of service to the fans. They know exactly why this show works, and they give us more of it every single week. And we lap it up because they're giving us the entertainment that we want. They, The producers, the cast understand why this show works, and it fires on all cylinders because everybody in their own way is slightly unhinged on this show. And everybody is ready to play. Even New Girl Bronwyn is like, oh, I see the games y'all playing with me. I'm about to play these games with you. And I'm going to do you. I'm going to pull a you on you. Uno reverse, B. I got you. Okay? And I, I was here for it all. And what I love is that this whole episode was just basically a party that Angie was throwing. And I, 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 I get into it because... The ladies from Salt Lake, they can make a party last a whole episode, as we saw in the first episode, um, just, just back a couple of weeks ago. And so now they're doing it all over again, but in a different way. This show just delivers. 
It delivers. It delivers. And I know a lot of people were thinking, well, I'm not going to watch it now that Monica's gone. And I'm not, this is no disrespect to Monica, but there is a formula for this show. And as long as they continue to stick to that formula, I feel like they will thrive because the women, they argue, they move on, they argue. And sometimes it lingers and sometimes it carries over, but it don't seem like it lasts for too long. Okay. Case in point. Heather and Mary get into it. Mary's calling Heather all types of lies. The next thing you know, when Lisa and, and Whitney are fighting, Mary and Heather are sitting there having a conversation like nothing ever happened. I live for it. I live for it because what that tells me is that there is at least a level of respect there in, in knowing that we're all here for a certain purpose and we need to fulfill that purpose. And that purpose is bigger than our issues, right? So let's, well, almost everybody, <laughs> let's get into the T of it all. Now that I've given you guys my 10, what do you guys think of it? Let me know in the chatterization down below. We start the episode off with, you know, we're definitely on theme with this whole Godfather mob type situation. And Angie is the perfect person for this because, you know, there were the rumors, the rumors and nastiness about Angie's family, you know, and Angie having some type of mafia ties or something like that. So I think that this was apropos for Angie. And I think that Angie is the willing participant that the producers can definitely push to give us a mob mafia-esque type introduction to the episode. So I appreciated it. And I also know that, I uh, listen, again, I think that Angie knows that she has a job to do and I think that she is, a, again, a very willing and eager participant. And because the show is so campy, it doesn't detract. If this were any other show, we would be able to tell that Angie was just sort of like, oh, yes, pick me. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do what you need me to do. I'll kick over this chair at the precise moment that I think the cameras will be looking at me to get a bigger reaction. Yes, I'll do it. Absolutely. This show works. Because we know that we, we're, we're all in on it, right? This show is so meta that we're all in on the mess, right? So again, perfect. So we see, you know, Angie is throwing a party for her 25th wedding anniversary, which I think is amazing. Um, shout out to her and Sean for going the distance with that. Go the distance on this. Go the distance. Oh my God. Lisa in this episode was giving all the Lisa that I feel like if you if you are a Lisa Barlow fan, she gave you everything that you want. And she she performed tonight, baby. OK, she performed. So um, she's excited that, you know, Angie has even invited her, you know, and Angie tells us that, well, she invited Lisa because they've been friends for so long, even though they're beefing right now. And she would have felt like it was the beginning of the end if if Lisa did not come. So I think it's good that Lisa is actually going to go. And we see also that Whitney invites Meredith out to dinner or for drinks. And she wants to apologize to Meredith and own her, take accountability for the fact that she really focused a lot of her attention on Meredith. And she lets Meredith know that I know that it wasn't you. I know that it was Lisa, allegedly, who is the person who fed this story to the they call it blogger. I'm going to call it media outlet because I feel like that's, I mean, you know, I just feel like for me, I just understand the terminology and what it can mean for people. So I just feel like, no, we will call it a media outlet. So um, now listen, the basis for this Whitney's new stance is she had a phone call it sounded like it was my boy Adam from Up and Adam. That's who it sounded like. And they put Adam's name. So I could only assume that it was him. You know, Adam and I used to recap Salt Lake City when it first started. We used to do it together. Um, and so shout out to Adam. Um, so there was a conversation that they keep referencing that um, Adam had with Whitney. And in that conversation, there was mention that the person who he asked the media out the other media outlet who was it that fed them the information about Whitney's designs allegedly coming from Alibaba okay so 
he asked the media outlet if it was who it was directly, but they wouldn't, they couldn't say. But he asked around the question, right? Was it a person who owns a jewelry line? We would assume that would be Meredith. The person said no. Was it a person who owns a beauty business? Um, we would assume that that would be Heather. That was a no. Was it a person who owns a drink beverage company? And so the answer was kind of like a yes. So the only reasonable, in my opinion, just based on the show, for Whitney to then assume would be for it to be Lisa. But the person never technically said Lisa. So I don't I, I don't know how you I don't know how we I don't know where we go with that. The other thing that I have to say about this is, you know, white labeling is. Listen, there are so many companies out there that white label products. And I feel like white labeling is being looked down upon in this instance because of the level of markup. Right. Now, again, when you add, here's the thing about white labeling. Y'all know that when y'all buy a lot of these high-end designers, the cost to make that good is, is really a fraction of what they are actually charging you, right? You're paying for the brand name. You're paying for the association with the brand name. That's essentially what you're doing. So when you think about some of these high-end designers, because they are not, a lot of times, they're not making the items like they used to. I could call a company, a, co a couple of company names out, but I shan't do it. Um, but what I can say is that some, some designers, the quality which you are now getting is not the quality for which they used to be made, right? So at least that's what it seems like. And, and from my surveying of the marketplace, a lot of people feel the same way. I say all that to say that a lot of companies do this. And so I, I don't know if Whitney is making much ado about nothing. The question that I have and that I want her to answer is, girl, are you white labeling the product, right? Is this from the Alibaba? And she probably would never say um, because she probably doesn't want to devalue the, the, uh, what, the what, what, she's, what her markup is. But again is it true or not like that's all i want to know like that's the re that's the real bottom line to me so anyway um you know meredith is like listen i think you should just have a conversation with lisa i don't want to be caught up in the middle of this and just get it out in the open and you guys will both feel better and i'm thinking to myself mm -hmm. <laughs> meredith do you know who <laughs> Meredith just don't want to be in the mix, okay? That's that's the bottom line with this. So then we see Bronwyn go and visit Mary. You know, we see Mary and her son, and he hasn't been answering the phone. He comes home with his girlfriend slash wife or whatever they call themselves. And, you know, I do feel for Mary in, tr in terms of her trying to understand how to, you know, be the best parent that she can for Robert Jr. because he seems to be in the mix of some things that, you know, I think any parent would be um, cautious of. So this is a very interesting and I think tricky and precarious story line. Uh, but I, I think it's authentic because I think it's actually real. And I think a lot of parents may identify with this on some level. Um, Bronwyn also fills her in on what's going on with her and her daughter. And that's how her and Mary kind of you know, I think that Mary was trying to take that opportunity to bond with her. And we learn more about how Mary feels about her mom, um, how she expresses that her she felt like her mom wasn't there for her. So we do get we're getting a lot deeper, Mary. And I'm in my mind, I'm like, girl, that must y'all must have shelled out the dollars for Mary this time because Mary is Mary is in the season. OK, Mary is is literally in it with the rest of them, which feels refreshing i think because it almost feels like production now values her a bit better and i feel almost like they're protective of they're a lot more protective of her in the same way that they are probably protective of some of the other cast members which i think is probably why we're seeing this side of mary um, it definitely feels like she's a lot more open. And I feel like looking back at previous seasons, I don't know that she maybe was as protected as much as she was looked at as an amusing plot point. All right. So we get to the party. You know, everybody starts to arrive. It's a it's a grand affair. And, you know, we see all of the things happening. 
And we get a couple of conversations that, you know, definitely need to happen. We see Bronwyn talking to Angie and Bronwyn is like, listen, girl, you know what? Since Heather wants to call me messy, I'm about to, I'm about to let you know who the real messy person is. Bronwyn lets Angie know that it was Heather who told Lisa that Angie was calling her a bad mom. Angie, to me, Angie, Angie was the Angie was the weakest link here because Angie then, in my opinion, runs to Heather and is almost like, ooh, girl, Braun, uh, you know, uh, Bronwyn just was trying to be in my ear, trying to convince me that you are the person that went back and told Lisa what I said about her. And Heather's like, well, yeah, I did. OK. And but it was that was that was messy of Bronwyn to do that. And I'm like, girl, she's doing what you do. Like you do that stuff all the time. I'm about to show you all how messy Heather is. And y'all not going to be able to and some of y'all not going to see it. But I'm about to tell you, if you noticed when her good girlfriend, Brittany, OK, enters the room with her new boo, Aaron. OK, Mary and Mary's like, who is Aaron? Mary can't even tell the difference between Aaron and, and Jared. OK, so it, it, it is what it is. As soon as your good girlfriend, Brittany, enters with Aaron. You are racing over to the man she's with, Aaron, and letting us all know that she has been with Aaron before, right? And in my mind, I'm like, okay, I mean, even if you had, like, ain't this your good girlfriend? Like, wouldn't you want to pull her to the side and tell her tell her that? Um, and then if you don't notice yet again, it was also um Heather who told the group when they were in Milwaukee. Oh, yeah. You know, she loves him because he's an Osmond. I mean, yes. I mean, don't you know the Osmond? That's... And so that led to Bronwyn questioning Brittany about her relationship and if she was just interested in the man because he was an Osmond. It was Heather that sparked that. Then as soon as Jared, who was invited by Whitney's husband, being messy, okay, as soon as Jared enters, it is Heather who is racing up to greet him. So are you more interested in your friendship with Brittany or are you more interested in Brittany's men? Okay. I mean, because Brittany is it, now Brittany ain't helpless, although she want to come across that way. But is it that you want Brittany's life? Because Brittany seemed to be Brittany got a if you watch the after show, Brittany got a spreadsheet of men's. And Brittany told us in the episode that she'll do, she'll, she'll go out with three men's in one night. Now, who got that kind of time? I don't know. Okay. Well, who got that kind of energy? I don't know. Okay. So, um, but at the end of the day, my, my question then becomes, girl, are you jealous of your friend? Cause you acting like this is some behavior that I definitely don't feel like a friend is going to be doing. Cause you brought her to, you brought her to us. Okay. But now every time, you know, she getting into it about something with her men, you are there front and center greeting the man with open arms. Lisa's more of a friend of Brittany than you are. So anyway, having said that, okay, Lisa and Brittany decide that they're going to have a conversation because Brittany shows up with a new man. And so they get into like a little comp of Ponderosa about, you know, Lisa and the inappropriateness of Lisa, you know, FaceTiming the Jared, Latin, what she did a couple of weeks ago or whatever like that. Mary rolls up and is like, what y'all talking about? Lisa's like, well, listen, since you're here, I just feel like, you know, are we okay? Because last time I, we were all together and you got into, you got it, you put your, your, your stiletto in Heather's neck. I feel like you kind of came for me too. And Mary is like, no, listen, every time I get into it with somebody, you jump on their side. Why is that? So then Heather rolls up and is like, what y'all talking about? And Mary's like, you. You got all these faces and no names, okay? You, everywhere you stop and everywhere you drop, you leave a trail of lies. And I was like, ooh. <laughs> so Heather is like, hold on, hold on. I thought we was good. What have I done to you lately, okay? what have? When have I ever been mean to you? And Mary's basically like, well, I, she almost got married. She almost got married at that one moment. But Mary, Mary 
quick as quick as the day quick as the day is long. Mary says, when have you ever been good to me? God knows what you're doing. God sees you in your life. <laughs> I said, not the Lord, not you didn't brought the Jesus Christ into it. Lord have mercy. So Heather is like, <laughs> you know what? What I loved about this argument was the way they defused the thing so quickly. It was like, you know, Heather was really like, I thought we were good. What have I done? What what have I done to you? And you can see Mary sort of soften a little bit. And it's like, you know, Lisa's like, did you get it all out? Did you get it out? Everything that you feel about me and Heather out. OK. And Mary's like, well, yeah, I mean, sure. <laughs> so, you know, Heather's like, OK, group hug. Mary's like, mm -mm, girl, I ain't hugging you. <laughs> now, let me go back and say I must acknowledge this. Has Mary at times said mean things about Heather? Absolutely. She has. It's things that I think that I wish she had probably never said. But I also feel like she was also correct about Heather in terms of the things that she says that Heather does. Because Heather gets flies under the radar and really nobody really ever is able to confront her about the things that she says and the bombs and the, and the trail of, of tears that she leaves behind. OK. So why? OK, then does Whitney's husband had had invited Jared down to the event? Jared shows up. I feel like personally speaking, I feel like Jared is looking for camera time. That's what I feel like. Jared wants to be on TV, in my opinion. OK. That's why he was so willing, ready and able to be at that event in less than an hour okay so he shows up and britney is in tears in front of her date i'm like girl you are not the player that you claim to be if you are out here dating three men at a night i mean i would expect you to have a little bit more fortitude a little bit more perseverance than what you are because you are in a puddle of tears and this man has just shown up so much so that you got to go outside and have a ponderosa with him real quick tell him how much you love him and how much he, and how much he knows he's playing you right now and, and he's like, okay, well, let's go back inside. You got a date. I came for the cameras. He didn't say that, but that's, again, how I feel. That's how I feel. My uh, That's my opinion. Jerd. So anyway, the next thing you see is Angie confronting Heather. Oh, girl, you know, Bronwyn was in my ear about how you, you know, came up to me and how you basically were, you know, telling her that what I said about Whitney, I'm like, girl, stop groveling to Heather, okay? And, you know, at that point, you know, Heather is like, well, you did say those things, and I felt like you were being very unfair to Lisa. And, you know, Angie's like, but I'm supposed to be your friend. And Heather's like, well, you being unfair to Lisa, and I got her back, basically. Then she turns to Bronwyn and is like, well, how dare you go back and be messy like I am? And Bronwyn is like, girl, you think you're the head cheerleader in charge of the girls, and you are not. You think that you are the only person here that can manage everybody's relationships. Well, boom, baby, I got you on a reverse. And so now you have to sit in your mess, and Heather scurries off. While she has scurried off, and now she's talking to Mary, I, listen, I again, I love it. I love that they could just, you know what, we're going to have it out, and then we're going to hash it out, then we're going to be, then we're going to sit here and have drinks together. Whitney knows that she needs to confront Lisa. So she pulls Lisa over. Don't y'all love it when other when other housewives see what's going on? And then they what I noticed was if you watch M Meredith and Angie, their faces were this close to, to, to Whitney's. They were like in the scene, like. So basically, Whitney says this. She accuses Lisa, then she asks. Lisa, I had to watch it twice. She says, I was told that it was you who basically put the information out there about my beauty biz, about my um my jewelry business being from Alibaba. Did you do it? So I mean, she technically asked her, because you know, Lisa's like, are you asking me or accusing me? Because there's the difference. And then Whitney changes the tone real quick. And at that point, Lisa's like, ah, Sean, 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 
Sean, I want you to call to get the LAP, LAPD on this. You get the LAPD on this, and you get the, you who who else? You get the Salt Lake City Police on this. I want you to go the distance on it. Go the distance on this one because she's accusing me of something that I did not do. She, I did not do this. So I want you to call everyone. Call everyone. <laughs> Baby, when I tell you when it's time for Lisa to perform, she never fails, okay? On the phone with her security personnel. Next thing you know, she is, I mean, she is going off, okay? She is going off. And I put, let me tell you something. Now, Whitney is a mess. When you look back at all the things that she has actually accused Lisa of doing in the past several seasons, when they go back through it during the after show, I mean, Whitney has said a lot of things about Lisa. So Lisa calling the, the her security personnel, I, I do get it. I do get her being fed up and frustrated, but it does also make her look a little like, I don't know, like, did you really, did you do it or not? Like, I mean, she said she did not do it, so we got to go with that, but... It's just interesting to me because then Whitney is like standing 10 toes down. Like you can yell, you can scream, you can do whatever you please. You can, uh, uh, you can, you can stomp your feet. You can, uh, uh, beat your, you can beat the drums. You can do whatever you got to do. Send out the town crier if you want to, but I'm standing 10 toes down in what I'm saying. Cause I feel like you did it. Okay. What we did not know that we find out later on in the after show is that, Lee, uh, Whitney had already talked to her attorney to find out what she what if she if she needed to do a cease and desist to get Lisa to stop doing this, which I don't know if that was mentioned in the scene, which could have led to Lisa calling her own people. So Lisa then runs up to Whitney's husband, which is a no no and says, basically, how can you live with this liar? She's nothing but a liar. Every time we try to get back on a good foot, she always does something to F up our relationship. This is where I felt like where Lisa went wrong because now you're involving the husband who were, they were already on pins and needles watching the scene anyway. But Justin is, to me, I mean, he seems real eager to be a part. So it did, wouldn't have taken much for him to then say to Lisa, my, my wife's not a liar. My wife's not a liar. Now, I don't know what was going on in the background that caused John Barlow to buck up because I feel like John Barlow don't ever say nothing. But at that moment, John Barlow didn't put his hand, looked like he didn't put his hands on Justin. And Justin's like, get your hands off of me. I'm about to pound him. <laughs> you know what? If anybody wanted to pound anybody, it should have been Aaron trying to pound Jared. But, you know, that was all Britney's fault. So whatever. All Aaron can do is sit there and try to get do the best job he can. Justice for Aaron. Anyway, um, that was the episode. It's to be continued. If you're going to end it on a to be continued, that is what you ended on a to be continued. You don't pull out the to be continued to me more than twice per season. You cannot pull it out more than twice per season. So you, I don't know if this is the one, but I'm going to tell you this was the appropriate time to pull it out. Okay, if you're going to do it, let this be a lesson, Housewives producers. Don't overuse the to be continued because we do not like it. Okay. Okay. All right. So with that being said, let me know what you guys thought about this episode. If you enjoyed it as much as I did, I have to give it a 10. It was chaotic. It was a mess. Everybody, everybody is clocked in on this show. Everybody. Okay. Even Brittany, who, when you think about Brittany, isn't this a revelation to you? Brittany, saw, the Housewives of Salt Lake City is no different from Jared to Brittany. Both Jared and, and the show are able to get the maximum amount of energy out of Brittany for a fraction of the cost. Brittany is giving them an entire storyline of a love triangle and this outrageous relationship that she has with this Osmond character. And she's willing to do it at likely a fraction of the cost in a friend role. Meanwhile, Jared also just considers her a friend. And she's he's able to get, why? It's, as the saying goes, why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? Both the show and Jared are getting the milk for free 
And Brittany is just a willing participant in both scenarios. Wow. Isn't that something? So anyway, let me know what you guys thought about this episode. I loved it. Give me more of it. I cannot wait for next week. Salt Lake City, you're doing the doggone thing. Keep doing it. All right. With that being said, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell button. And I will catch you in the next video.